The single is called Your Love Never Changed. Uh, it'll be out July 8, 2016. And what it means, uh, where do I start? Um, I guess you put it like this, you know, we've all been in relationships where uh, we've done something wrong or we've done something that we weren't supposed to do. And the other party in that relationship looked at what we've done wrong and it totally cut us off, it totally wrote us off. And uh, in our relationship with Christ, um, we do a lot of things wrong. We go left when he says right. We, we just do a lot of things against his will. But the difference between him and our physical relationships is he's not gonna turn our back, his back on us. Uh, he's not gonna say, you know what? You disobeyed me, you didn't listen to me, so I'm not messing with you. I'm not going, I'm not gonna provide for you. I'm not gonna wake you up tomorrow just because you, you know, his love for us never ever changes. And that's that's the tagline of the song. Your love never changed. That your love never changed. That your love never changed. That your love never changed. My job as a worship leader or as a minister is very important. I feel like it's my my duty to sing the Bible that some people may never read. And what I meant by that was uh, we're all busy. Um, and some of us just don't have the appetite to read the Bible for, for whatever reason. So if I can find a way to put scripture to songs with music that people actually want to hear, then what I've done is I've packaged the gospel in a way where anybody can listen to it. Somebody that's unsafe, who's never heard the word, and if they if they like the melody, if they like the song, if they like the music, I've just given you what you don't want to do or what you don't have time to do in reading the Bible and the song. So um, I think that's very important. That's a very important gift to have and a gift to work on to kind of package the package the Bible, package the scripture in a way that everybody can uh, that we can everybody can partake. I started high school maybe around 2003, 2004. So when I when I went to high school in 2003, that's when I met all of my musician friends and that's when we kind of like clashed and kind of like went from there. Jermaine Walston, he's on the keys. Um, Dave Hill's on the drums. Um, Andrew Monroe, he's on the guitar. And Chris Brown, he's on the bass guitar. Uh, right now we're missing Montel Gray, he'll be on the organ. And uh, Jeremiah, he'll play auxiliary drums pretty much anywhere, anywhere we need him because he does everything. We're all a representation of each other, so we want to sound the best that we can. guys like Fred Hammond and Israel Horton and all those guys who are like in the forefront of things because they I feel like they really bring the world what we need to hear as far as the gospel is concerned. When people think of church music they think of old organs and old church mothers singing and dragging a song out when it really doesn't have to be like that. You can dress it up in a way where the music sounds great but the most important part to me is content. Uh, is, is what your lyrics are saying. I take my my lyrics from scripture. Uh, I'm very theologically sound and theologically based in the way that I write. Because um, I think that's what people remember. You remember those lyrics before you remember, remember how the beat went and all you know the little intricate parts of the beat. You remember the song. You remember how it made you feel. So the lyrics are very important. It'll be ideal for me to wake up and. My only job is to be traveling the world preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I say preaching because that can mean going and speaking. I don't hold myself strictly to singing. I don't say, you know, I won't, I won't speak, I won't do this, I won't do that. Like anything, any way that God can use me, I'm open to doing it. The 
Let's go.